The mission of Google is to store and make accessible 100% of human knowledge. So Google, in effect, would like to store everything. Now, if you wanted to travel somewhere, and let's just say go on a vacation, where might you search? So Microsoft Bing, interestingly enough, refers to itself as a decision engine. So Microsoft Bing will help you make decisions in certain segmented areas. So one of these segments is flight. Another one might be food, recipes. We're referring to these segments as vertical search engines. We can also call them deep web resources. Now, NYIT has a relationship with Wolfram Alpha. Wolfram Alpha is a computational engine. So again, it's another vertical search engine, but it's a computational database. So it's a specialized tool that you can search to what? To compute. So in the case of Google, right, we're searching for 100% of human knowledge, at least this is their, their mission, it's not attainable, but it's certainly what they're striving to do uh, at Microsoft with Bing. They're helping you make decisions in certain areas. Now, from the perspective of someone studying, 89% of students, when tasked with a problem, will first search Google search engine. Of those 89%, only 1% will click next on a page of results. And more disturbing studies have also shown that students will take a result from the fifth page and assume that it's as, as qualified as, as a result from the first page. So if we take a, a study group uh, and we have a control group and we provide the actual group of results with results that we've intentionally mixed, the students don't discern between the mixed results and the page rank results. Now, as a researcher, one of the best questions that you can ask a librarian is, where do you think I should search? So when you go to a library website, if you're an architecture student, uh, there is a vertical space. And let's just change this up here, a vertical space in the domain of architecture. And what might you search in the architecture space? You would certainly want to know about Avery Index, the architecture periodicals, and you would also want to know about API, the Architectural Publications Index, published by the Royal Institute of British Architects. So these are two vertical search engines, two deep web spaces, uh, deep web as opposed to dark web, deep web spaces, which Google cannot web crawl. So the information here you will not find in Google. The index is not replicated in Google. It's a specialized academic tool for architecture research. Now the point I'm trying to make here is that in different domains there are different tools. So in architecture these are two tools that you would certainly want to know about. You, know, you could also add some others. A, a union catalog, a library web catalog, perhaps WorldCat. Now if you were researching and you wanted to find peer-reviewed scholarly articles. Another database that you might search is ASC, AFC, Academic Search Complete. Uh, if you're an engineer, you would want to search IEEE. Uh, if you're a computer scientist, you would want to search uh, Association for Computer Computing Machinery. So there are different tools in different domain spaces. And this is all about tool belt literacy. As learners, active learners who want to take control of their own learning, we need to know the different tools we can use in our domain spaces. Now again, the last thing is, it's the perfect question to ask a librarian. I'm tasked with researching this topic. This is what I'm interested in and what I want to know more about. Where do you think I should look? And you'll develop your tool belts through the course of your education. And as you do so, uh, you'll scaffold your learning in a better way. So this is a very important concept. Most of us search Google. Most of us don't know how to search Google. We'll get into that in a, in a further video or two. Uh, but you really need to know the kinds of tools that you want to be searching uh, in your domain spaces. So hopefully this was helpful, and we'll see you again.